If studying feels harder than scrolling, it's not because you lack discipline. It's because your brain has been trained to chase fast rewards. Modern platforms conditioned your attention system to expect stimulation every few seconds. Studying lives on the other end of that spectrum. Slow, steady, effort first, reward later. This script isn't about motivation speeches. It's about taking your attention back with psychology, not guilt. You're not fixing yourself. You're recalibrating your brain away from instant dopamine and back toward depth, clarity, and real learning. We're going to reset the reward system, rebuild curiosity, and make focus feel natural again, not forced. Let's get into how to train your mind to crave thinking like it used to crave noise. Let's cut through the self-blame first. Most people don't quit studying because they're lazy. They quit because their brain is doing exactly what it evolved to do. Conserve energy and chase efficient reward. When your brain evaluates a task, it doesn't ask, is this good for my future? It asks, how much effort will this cost right now and what do I get in return? That's neural economy. The mind isn't a motivational poster, it's a biological accountant. And right now, studying looks like low-yield investment. It demands focus, patience, delayed payoff. Meanwhile, your phone is offering rapid novelty and instant feedback with zero effort. From a cold biological standpoint, your brain isn't betraying you. It's optimizing. Attention isn't an emotion, and it isn't a personality trait. It's a finite metabolic budget. When you feel unmotivated, what's actually happening is that your brain has calculated that conserving mental resources is safer than spending them on slow-burn goals. And if you've spent years feeding it fast stimulation, it has learned that anything slower than a swipe is not worth it. This isn't failure. It's conditioning. And what's conditioned can be reconditioned. When you realize your difficulty focusing isn't proof of weakness but a predictable neurological adaptation to your environment, the shame dissolves and responsibility returns. You don't fix this by bullying yourself into hustle. You fix it by understanding the system and learning to steer it. Modern stimulation doesn't just distract you. It retrains the architecture of your reward system. Every notification, swipe, and unpredictable burst of novelty teaches your brain that reward should be immediate, varied, and effortless. The circuit that once rewarded deep focus and gradual mastery now fires for rapid consumption and minimal friction. This is reinforcement learning in action. Behavior that yields fast dopamine gets repeated. Behavior that demands patience gets abandoned. Over time, you don't just lose the ability to focus. You lose the expectation that slow effort ever leads to satisfaction. That's why scrolling feels automatic, almost involuntary while opening a textbook feels like lifting emotional concrete. Your brain isn't craving entertainment, it's chasing certainty of reward. Think about how often you reach for your phone without a real reason. The impulse isn't curiosity, it's a conditioned reflex, a slot machine pull. You're not choosing distraction, you've been trained into micro-seeking behavior, and the more your brain rewards itself for these tiny hits, the more traditional effort feels intolerable. This isn't about weakness, it's neural adaptation to a stimulation environment designed for compulsion, not growth. The point isn't to shame this behavior, it's to recognize it. Once you see the mechanism, you can interrupt it. Attention becomes something you reclaim, not something you chase. Convenience has a psychological price. When everything is instantly available, your cognitive system loses tolerance for friction. The mind becomes calibrated for speed, novelty, and low effort, not depth. Studying isn't fighting boredom. It's fighting an entire behavioral expectation system shaped by friction-free technology. Cognitive load theory explains why. Thinking consumes metabolic energy. The brain prefers shortcuts. If information is spoon-fed in tiny dopamine-spiced fragments, long-form processing feels like a threat instead of a challenge. That's why you can scroll for hours, but feel tired after 10 minutes of concentration. Not tired in the muscles, but in the mechanism that allocates mental resources. Then there's reward prediction error. When the brain expects constant stimulation and doesn't get it, it interprets the absence as discomfort. Silence feels empty. Slow learning feels wrong. You don't dislike studying. You dislike the gap between your current reward baseline and the pace of real understanding.
This isn't a moral failure. It's a mismatch between ancient learning machinery and modern stimulation environments. Your mind was built for effortful discovery, not algorithmic spoon-feeding. When you understand that studying feels difficult because the digital world inflated your reward expectations, you stop taking the struggle personally. Difficulty isn't evidence you can't focus. It's evidence your brain remembers how to survive on convenience, and you're teaching it how to live on meaning again. Reclaiming attention isn't about dramatic digital fasts or performing monk cosplay. Radical deprivation usually backfires. The brain rebels, and discipline becomes a temporary performance instead of a sustainable shift. The goal isn't punishment, it's recalibration. Think of this phase like teaching your nervous system to sit in quiet again, without panicking for stimulation. Five minutes of intentional stillness. Phone-free meals. Short walks where your brain is allowed to get bored. These micro-resets don't feel heroic. They feel inconvenient, slightly uncomfortable, and strangely clarifying. Over time, you build tolerance for effort and silence, the psychological equivalent of reoxygenating muscles after shallow breathing for years. The trick is consistency, not extremism. You're not trying to starve your dopamine system, you're trying to reintroduce nuance to it. Instead of letting algorithms decide your emotional tempo, you create pockets of intentional slowness where thought has room to form. Silence stops feeling threatening and starts feeling like a clean mental canvas. Boredom shifts from discomfort to signal, a sign your brain is shedding old reflexes and relearning how to generate interest internally, not outsource it to flashing screens. Gradually, your brain remembers how to pay attention without entertainment scaffolding. You aren't depriving yourself, you're detoxing from artificial urgency and returning to a natural tempo where thought can stretch instead of sprint. You can't muscle your way into sustained focus, you reward your way into it. Studying becomes easier when it feels meaningful, not obligatory. Replace the mental script from, I have to learn this, to, I get to unpack how this works. Curiosity is dopamine's long-term sibling, slower, deeper, but far more stable. Break content into digestible victories, a concept mastered, a question answered, a connection made. Use active recall. Explain ideas out loud. Draw mental maps. These are not study hacks. They are reinforcement loops. When learning feels like discovering rather than enduring, motivation shifts from external pressure to internal momentum. And there's a psychological elegance here. Every time you understand something, you gain a tiny piece of control over reality. Knowledge is orientation. It shrinks uncertainty. It makes the world less chaotic and yourself less reactive. That satisfaction... The quiet click of comprehension becomes a reward far more grounding than any notification ping. Studying stops being a chore you escape from and becomes a space where you sharpen perception. The reward is no longer a break. The reward becomes the understanding itself. 6. Rewiring Identity From consumer to thinker. Attention is an identity trait as much as a habit. Every time you choose deliberate focus over passive consumption, you cast a vote for who you are becoming. You stop being just a participant in the digital feed and start becoming someone who can generate, understand, and question. The tone here isn't ego or superiority, it's quiet sovereignty. You turn studying into self-definition. I think deeply. I learn by choice. I value understanding the world is becoming more distracted by the minute. Depth is rebellion. Thought is advantage. Training your mind becomes an act of independence, not self-punishment. Identity isn't built in dramatic moments. It's shaped in tiny, private choices that no one applauds. Every time you resist the urge to scroll and instead lean into thought, you are sculpting a mind with agency. You're saying, without speaking, I am someone who directs my cognition rather than surrendering it. This transformation doesn't roar. It hums a steady internal recognition that ideas feel more nourishing than noise. You don't become a thinker by talking about thinking. You become one by sitting with ideas long enough for them to change you. And slowly, the motivation shifts from wanting to be productive to wanting to be capable. You start seeking depth, not for grades or validation, but because you recognize the power of an organized mind in a world addicted to chaos.
there comes a point where concentration stops feeling like effort and starts feeling like strength. The noise dulls. The internal urgency fades. Reading feels immersive instead of heavy. You catch yourself reaching for a book instead of a feed, not from discipline, but from appetite. That doesn't happen overnight, and it doesn't come with fanfare. It arrives quietly, like clarity settling into a once-crowded room. This is the psychological pivot. Studying is no longer a task, but a way of existing that feels clean, controlled, and deeply self-directed. You don't chase stimulus anymore. You choose it. Focus becomes freedom, and distraction feels like a downgrade. When this shift happens, it feels less like you're trying to control your mind and more like your mind has finally aligned with you. Stillness becomes a resource, not a punishment. Work feels like presence, not strain. You begin to crave depth because it feels stable, expansive, and empowering, like you're building internal architecture instead of collecting mental crumbs. This isn't a motivational high. It's a baseline upgrade. The world doesn't suddenly get quieter. You get stronger. And once you taste that kind of clarity, chaos feels cheap. The shift, when focus, feels like power. If you've made it this far, it already tells me something about you. Most people tap out when the conversation leaves instant tips and enters the territory of thinking, rewiring, and actually taking ownership of their mind. You didn't. This phase, the part, after awareness, is where most transformation fails. Not because people don't want change, but because they don't have a system to guide it. They try to wrestle discipline out of thin air. They try to fight coding, studying, identity, emotions, habits, dreams, and the digital world with raw willpower alone. You don't need to fight harder, you need better tools. I built something for people like you, the ones who feel too much, think too deeply, and refuse to sleepwalk through life. It's called Control Alt Grow. It's not a motivational speech ebook, it's a field manual for breaking the dopamine scroll feedback loop, rebuilding discipline and clarity. Understanding your subconscious, not just manifesting around it. Turning emotions into signal instead of chaos. Navigating modern traps, perfection, comparison, performative productivity. Using your mind, identity, and dreams as tools, not mysteries. Learning time control and internal stillness. It's for students, builders, deep feelers, overthinkers, anyone who wants control, not numbness. Protocols, not cliches. Clarity, not noise. If this video helped you, tell me what part hit you most in the comments. I actually read them. And if you want to go deeper, the link to the ebook is in the description. Check it out quietly, no pressure. You're already doing the work by watching, by thinking, by choosing depth over distraction. Sometimes all it takes to shift a life is one decision. I'm not mentally outsourcing anymore. Stay curious, stay sharp, and keep building the mind you'll have to live with forever.